陛下有命，要封你为妃。Yeah, you know what, Kaishu, you kind of deserve this, okay? I mean, you had a kind, respectful, and mentally stable man fawning over you, and you're gonna give it all up for this? You know, if you had to devote your life to a rock, at least find one with a sense of humor. Welcome to a Pearl Eclipse deep dive where we'll be discussing the male lead Fang Jianming. Now, if you're still here, I assume you have no problem watching me tear this guy apart because、uh, I most definitely will. Let's get started. 师傅 Fang Jianming is the classic mysterious brooding male lead with the infinite ability to endure the worst physical and emotional pain. Because as it goes, at this point of his life, there's no obstacle the world can give him that he hasn't gone through already. That is until that one special woman appears and turns his life upside down, or you know something like that. Jian Ming is also that powerful teacher of fantasy, the most attractive man in the room, assumingly the cleverest, the strongest, the one people would run to if there's trouble. He always has some kind of a noble secret waiting to be discovered by that one girl the audience can easily slip themselves into. He suffers alone with his physical injuries, and whenever addressed by concerned friends, he always has his favorite answer ready. Please. To summarize it all, Jian Ming's character is kind of uncreative, unconvincing, drab, and sleepy for about 36 episodes. All of which is acceptable. We all know what kind of story this is. It's an easy fantasy, and the drama counted on the actor's charm to spin it. That's understandable. However, from episode 37 on, Jian Ming goes beyond the line of dull but acceptable. 臣请陛下，让海氏入宫。To refresh your memory here, Hai Xu and Jin Ming have just gotten married in secret at this point. But during their wedding night, one of Ti Lan's mates with a random backstory successfully poisons the emperor. The poison hits Jin Ming instead, and as a result, he will die in a few months. Hence, Jin Ming comes up with a plan. <laughs> He exposes Hai Shu's female identity in front of everyone, forcing the emperor to take her under his protection temporarily. Chen Qing, 陛下让海氏入宫。Now my initial reaction to this is, thank the heaven, this guy's finally done something interesting. This might be a mistake, and he's not a hero anymore, but an anti-hero, and that's better than whatever he's been all along. If only I knew better. No, no, we don't get an anti-hero whose actions are recognized as morally gray. Instead, the drama keeps insisting that before you is the most noble and sympathetic of men, and that he has no other choice. And they do this by having other characters repeatedly praise Jian Ming's chivalrous nature, telling us that the only thing he's guilty of is caring too much. Fine drama. I see how it is. You're gonna arm twist me into accepting that Tian Ming's an honorable man with a plan too deep and too smart for regular people to understand. Well, how about we take a closer look at Tian Ming's plan? You why don't you let me make my own decision? Firstly, Jin Ming goes this far to make sure Hai Xu is taken care of after he's dead, implying that Hai Xu and everyone around her are useless. Thanks, dude. Secondly, Jin Ming assumes that hiding behind a powerful man is the only way for a woman like Hai Xu to survive, while all evidence points to the contrary. And there's not enough world building to convince us that women are entirely powerless in this universe. And no, just telling us that this is a Chinese imperialistic period is not enough, because if this was anything true to imperialistic China, Hai Xu's disguise would have been exposed a long time. Ago. Thirdly, Jin Ming assumes that being with the emperor can provide Hai Xu protection, while some random mate has just easily slipped poisons into the emperor's midnight snack. Fourthly, he assumes Hai Xu has no choice but to agree with him that a suffocating life in the palace is better than risking death to fight for her freedom. With all these assumptions, Jin Ming is basically saying to Hai Xu, "How you live your life is my decision, as long as I can keep you alive." While conducting the most unreliable plan ever. You are dead. 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 And making the emperor look good in the process. Yeah. So in conclusion, caring too much is the least significant one on Jian Ming's list of offenses. Now, Jian Ming's unnecessary secrecy and disrespect toward Hai Xu don't stop there. For example, after some research, they find that mermaids may have the ability to cure Jian Ming. It's also established that Hai Xu is the only person they know of with the ability to summon a mermaid. Yet Jian Ming refuses to let her get involved because. 教人解决不了我身上的毒，海氏知道真相。等我撒手去了，还是如何自处？ 
you know, it just gets to a point where I can't even joke about it anymore. Like, I know this drama is catered towards girls, and it's about that fantasy about a quiet, brooding man who would do anything to protect you and that stuff. But to glorify the fact that the male lead believes the woman he loves is so useless that she won't be able to handle the disappointment of a failed mission, and uses it to justify excluding her from the mission his life depends on? Like, who even... who thought this was romantic? You know, really quickly here, I gotta give credit to William Chen. He delivers that line like it was the most sacred truth this universe has ever heard, ever seen. Anyway, now you may ask, well, other male leads have done this kind of secret scheming behind the female leads back before, so why does Jinming get all the criticism? Let me briefly address some of those other cases. Hua Jingu is a literal walking bomb who has no idea how to manage her power. Her mentor has to try his best to make all the decisions. Let's not forget that he is highly effective in keeping away from her, and the fact that his plans fail indicates the drama does not glorify his controlling nature. Lin Xi, again, kind of a bomb and a gullible one too. As problematic as it is, if Tu Chen doesn't take control of her, other people will, a few of whom are waiting to literally blow up the world. Ye Hua, he's a reckless, naive, and suicidal teenager who's never been treated like a human being all his life and therefore has no idea how to treat other people with respect. Jin Ming, he has none of these excuses, but apparently... Yeah, we're supposed to believe that. And that too. It later transpires that even though Jian Ming took away Hai Xiu's agency and basically signed her up to be another man's wife, he still believes it is within his right to do things like walking into a bedroom at night to watch her sleep. And Hai Xiu thinks that's hot, so I, I don't know what to tell you here, okay? I know. 